obviously the team we haven't talked about and that in itself is the storyline is we haven't even had to mention fucking g2 remember not only are they the champions but when they started the split like aside from the bds loss they were smurfing on everyone everyone on the team was stomping the score lines were crazy everyone was like 8 0 12 and shit like in every game what's happened to g2 what's, what's happened to these guys i mean from what i could see is like in uh, in spring Yankos and Cavs were just like smurfing out of their minds, kind of. And I feel like those kind of performances are not there to last, kind of. Because, like, you can't just, like, be that good that you just beat every game, like, every team. Not 2v5, right? I think the, the rest of the team was also playing decent, right? But I think most, like, some, some of, most of the games were just, like, 1-2v5. Like, Cavs and Yankos were just that, like, good, I would say. And I think those kind of performance are, performances are, like, not reliable enough. And I feel like those are like lacking more right now. I feel like those kind of performances are not yeah, happening right now with uh, with Caps and Yankos. Uh, they're still playing like decent, right? I mean, I, maybe maybe against SK like Caps got solo killed or something, right? It's not the same as it uh, as in spring. And yeah, I think that's the biggest issue right now is that they just yeah, they they're playing worse than before. I, I would say like as a as a mid jungle. I mean, I would say it's understandable because you can't just keep playing like they were in, in, in spring because uh, they were just playing too well, I would say. And uh, yeah, I that's think, kind of that problem right now. I think the problem is, is like, to your, to your point, I agree. But to be more specific, I think that it's really just a lack. They, they don't seem to be able to get much done in the early game right now. Like they seem to lack a lot of agency. They're losing fights that they pick. Like they seem to, they seem to be getting outplayed. I mean, you saw that in the game against SK, where they just fed to Kali four kills to start off the game, and it was kind of unnecessary to have that level of, of aggression playing Volibear and Azir in the mid lane. It's like, what's the point in doing this? Like, you don't need to force a play right now. You can just sit there with Azir and scale up for the late game, and you can play towards your Lucian and your Nami if you're the Volibear, right? You could, you have other things that you can be doing on the map. So I, I, I feel like they are not... <laughs> they are not reading the game state very well right now. And you can see that in the Misfits game as uh, too, because they should have won that game. But they let Misfits... First off, Misfits got three Barons in that game, and two of them were basically for free because they were forcing desperation plays on the bottom side of the map, and then they just, Misfits just walked to Baron and took it, right? And so I don't really understand how this team can make these really fundamental misreads on the game state or where they can apply pressure or when they can go to certain parts of the map because it's it's really just doing them in. They don't they don't have to play this aggressively and in the late game they need to make sure that they can cover their bases in terms of objective and macro play. Um, and not just give up objectives for free. I mean, these are really fundamental errors. So it's confusing. It's confusing why this level of pl of player uh, can do this. And to your point, Kaiser, yeah, they may have been peaking at the right time, but it, simultaneously, we don't expect Yankos and Caps to be playing this badly at the same time either. It's like they've gone, they've completely 180. I mean, yeah, but the thing is, like, the thing is, G2 was never like the cleanest team in the world. I would say, like, I, no. th I think they always had like a, a really messy style, right? And not unlike, for example, Excel and Roker now, they never had like the the perfect macro you just play out the game and the enemy can't do anything so there is always like um the enemy team can always kind of come back if they just play better fights than you right and for example in the misfits game they were like getting outscaled i would say and uh yeah I, I think at some point you just have to play the fights correctly or there is no coming back right and i think uh yeah i think they just had some issues with like maybe just getting caught out too much and like yeah just making minor mistakes that like snowball into enemy team getting dragon which delays the game for like another five minutes which means a cocky gets like one more item for example or something like that. and then then the game is really really hard and i think we also had that kind of issue because we also like to play messy right uh and that's kind of what's happening to g2 but i think g2 has like worse early game than us and they also like pick um i think worse early game champions right so uh they have like a mix kind of sometimes like where they they don't really scale out scale, but they also don't really like stomp early game. So it's kind of hard to balance it. And yeah, I think like sometimes uh, maybe they just should just like commit to one style, which makes it easier to play because you just, I mean, if you if you get to thirty minutes, you lose the game, but at least you had like a better shot at making it, making the enemy nexus explode at twenty five minutes, right? And I think like sometimes maybe their draft has like a bit of like 
a bit too much of any like everything kind of. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, my counter argument would be they do have two rookies in the team still. Like, I think sure. that part's underrated. Yeah, uh, my counter argument would be that DRX plays that style and actually has been successful. It's just it, you have to play. It's not very surprising, but you know, if Def's playing Callista and they've got a, a Zir in the mid lane, you just play into the Callista early, try and stack dragons, and then scale into late game. So it's it's doable. It's doable, but it is very easy to predict what you're going to do in those scenarios. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, I think G2 as a team, they also like to play a lo lot around topside, I think. Uh, they usually like to leave Flakit alone. And uh, yeah, Yankos and Caps just uh, do their thing together. And I think that's been kind of um, harder to do, maybe, because GP is just so hard to make plays on. Plays on. Like, he, he just presses yeah, out spoiler, the whole... Broken Blade, Broken Blade can't play Gankamak either. <laughs> <laughs> he can't play that. He can't play that. I'm telling you. I think his yeah, first like, Gangplank games were actually at MSI ever. Pretty sure. Pretty sure that's true. Okay. <laughs> I think, by the way, I think in general, there's another fact. I think YG2's been worse. I think Broken Blade's had a pretty dodgy split so far. Remember, he was called the best top player in the last split. I mean, yeah. I think, I think Broken Blade as a player is like insane mechanically. Uh, I mean, not sure what, what's happening this split. Maybe his, maybe his GP. I mean, I think his GP is like fine, but I mean, it's obviously like not... Not a Fari level or like the best GP, right? But I think it's like, like you can play it in LEC, right? And yeah, I'm just not really sure like what's what's really going on. Maybe they just have like the wrong meta read and stuff uh, regarding topside because I think Caps has not been playing that much Lissandra and stuff like this, which could be a really good pick for them if they want to like play more on topside to to set up dives and stuff like this. Uh, he's been playing more like uh, Ari, right? I mean, Ari is also like similar, I would say, but it's harder to execute, I would say. And so, yeah, maybe maybe they just don't play as well as they used to, and the, the picks that they usually, usually like to pick uh, are just harder to execute because other teams just f figured out the, the counters, right? For example, the, the Ari into... Uh, Lissandra into Ari, for example, right? That's fair. So, yeah. Uh, sorry, gang it was not Broken Blade's first Gangplank games at MSI. That's my mistake. He's played 23 games of Gangplank and six since MSI, including. So, just to correct the record there. But, um, yeah, I mean... I think a lot if we're if we're reflecting on um, on the performances at MSI and the kind of peak of G2 before they slid down in the second round robin, a lot of that was, you know, the caps just absolutely popping off on the RE and having these wonderful individual performances. And uh, I mean, to a certain degree players or teams like have caps his teams have lived and died by caps he's he's not the most consistent player he's just transcendent when he hits his peaks right that's what the real danger and the real scariness of him is do you think that g2 might be uh you know taking the taking their foot off the gas a little bit in the regular season with the assumption oh we're gonna ramp up in time for playoffs or do you think this is a real problem with the team because Right now, they're on the outside of playoffs looking in. If the split ended today after the first round robin, they'd be four and five and they would be in seventh place and that would be it. I mean, yeah. I mean, the thing is, you never know because, like, I mean, MSI kind of hurts teams more than it, like, gains them anything, right, usually. As, I mean, at least in the in the short term. Like, I think we also had that problem when we went to MSI, like, the split started, like, I mean, two or three, two weeks later or something and we didn't have any break. And I think that might be affecting uh, G2 as well, that they just didn't have any time to cool off uh so and of course maybe they they cooled off a bit more and then in turn they didn't scrim right uh, it's always like a a two-sided uh i don't know maybe edge i guess like uh, either you scrim too much and then you burn out or like the other thing right uh so it's really hard to say what's what the what's the problem right now i think msi could definitely be still in the back of their minds kind of uh i mean at week four i would say you have to kind of start uh pushing the pedal again because uh there, there is going to be, there are going to be games that are just like lost in draw, for example, or like lost because you made one mistake early game and the enemy team got like three kills. You can't really control those kind of games. I mean, you can, but like it's it's hard to to kind of come back from those games. And if you are like four or five and you lose like two or three kind of games like that, then you kind of have to win against the good teams. And if you can't make that happen, 
then you're kind of out in, in playoffs already, right? And It's possible they could miss playoffs, yeah. If people don't realise exactly. six teams in the league have more wins than them. So they have to get more wins than six teams. Well, not six, like a couple, at least like one or two. And they're tied so with again, Astralis. Because <laughs> as you say, the part people misunderstand is that they're just going to look at the schedule and go, well, come on, you know, they'll beat BDS and SK. Like, no, because as you say, if the draft means so much, all you need is to fuck up one bad draft at they the wrong time. They lost to BDS that could and SK. Be, you know, that, could, <laughs> that could be the reason you don't make playoffs, though. <laughs> Oh. I mean, they're they're not they're not having a great time right now. They're one in four, or they're zero in four in the last two weeks of competition. Like this is this is a really big problem for them after a strong start. And um, you know, it's it's going to be. I think it's going to be a rough uphill battle, especially because it, they're. There have been teams like SK and Astralis that have been on the up and up. Even arguably Vitality. Look, they didn't look good in their their first game uh, this past week, but in their second game, they it was one of the rare Vitality games where they had a successful early game. And when they have that, they are good. It's just that that happens not so frequently. Um, when they get yeah. the lead, it's hard to beat them, but they, they rarely get that lead. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the thing is, like, they also got kind of their best champions, right? Uh, Ifari got his GP. I, I think it's really comfortable for Ifari to play right now as well because he's, like, the best GP in the league and the GP is so broken. So I think if they get their champions and they can execute them, right, they're a really good team. Uh, I think sometimes they have some inconsistencies, as you said, like, uh, for example, Perks, like, sometimes uh, he's the best player in the world and, like, sometimes he just forgets his hands, right? I think uh, it's just, like, kind of a, a random team, I would say. Like, I mean, it's fitting with Kazi in the team as well, right? Like, he's, he's the same kind of player. And I feel like that's why they sometimes have, like, some, yeah, issues in, in like, uh, in the games because they, they just, like, they make some really questionable decisions, and like then the game is just lost from the from the start, right? But I think if they if they find their like footing and if they play well, they can be a really good team. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel, then, or you know, be a pleb and don't.